Saadeh Hedayat was a pioneer of Iranian postmodern literature, as well as a distinguished and revolutionary intellectual. Globally translated and regarded as Iran's most important writer of both during and after his time, many of his works tell of the tortured soul of deprived people, their lamentations, and their rebellions. With the aim of elevating his surrounding culture, he translated and infused the works of writers such as Jean-Paul Sartre, Franz Kafka, and Anton Chekhov, whom he held in high regard. On April 9, 1951, in a flat in Paris, Hedayat committed suicide. There had been much speculation, I dare say propaganda on his suicide, details of his life, and his message. The late author and playwright Ghulam Hussein Saidi said of Hedayat, if they have labeled this poor alienated critic as a lover of death or antisocial, they have erred. He valued life in its splendor. He saw it and he suffered. He was an intellectual in the full meaning of the word as he never bowed down to any sort of might. He had discovered and become intensely aware of the corrupt odor of the clerics. At a time when even talk of clerical rule had yet to emerge, he painted us a picture of it. Naked Solitude, a glimpse into the life and literature of Sadiq Hidayat. It is being directed by award-winning director Muslim Mansouri, the founder of Iranian's underground cinema, and the individual whom Iran's other titan in postmodern writing, the poet Ahmad Shamlu, entrusted to document his life before he passed in the summer of 2000. The purpose of this film is to take Hidayat out of unwarranted controversies and distortions and bring him more into a global consciousness. As, like the writings of Poe, Kafka, and D. H. Lawrence, Hidayat enables each of us to further our quest for the fulfillment and the enrichment of our lives. Stereotypes, but what's very important, as Ghulam Hussein Saidi mentioned, he never bowed down to authority, he never bowed down to any sort of might, whether it was in the West or whether it was in his hometown. And, and this isolates him quite a bit, of course, but it isolates the documentary crew as well that wants to make a film about him and highlight all those rebellious characteristics that he had against so many things and for so many other things. Uh, so we become somewhat isolated and we rely very much on ordinary individuals to bring him to life. He is for the ordinary individual. The ordinary individual has to be for him as well. He, we need $20, $50, dollars $50 contributions um, quite a bit because we can't benefit from um, mainstream institutions and organizations uh, or some many non-mainstream organizations even. So uh, you go to kickstarter.com and we contribute quite a lot in exchange for whether it's your, your interest in history or in literature. We have books in English and in, and in Persian for you to, to get in exchange for just $20, $50 contributions. And uh, you go to kickstarter.com and you search Naked Solitude in the documentary film section. And we're quite blessed to have such a uh, humble and pure documentary crew, the director, the production crew, all only in it here um, for getting a minimal cost to bring him to life in all the significant aspects of his life and his works. So I hope you contribute, you help us out, um, even small contributions, um, and we'll um, see you then. My life experiences have taught me that a frightful chasm separates me from the others. The same experiences also have taught me when to remain silent and keep my thoughts to myself. Nevertheless, I have decided that I should write, that I should introduce myself to my shadow that voraciously swallows all that I put down. It is for him that I am making this experiment to see if we can know each other better. Since the time when I severed my ties with others, I want to know myself better. Absurd thoughts? Fine. Yet these thoughts torture me more than any reality. 
are not these people who resemble me, who seemingly share my needs, whims, and desires, gathered here to deceive me? Are they not shadows brought into existence to mock and beguile me? Are not all my feelings, observations, and calculations imaginary and quite different from reality? I write only for the benefit of my shadow on the wall. I need to introduce myself to it. I went over to her bedside and bent down until I could feel her warm, even breath upon my face. It seemed to me that if only I could breathe in this warmth for a while, I should come to life again. 